Toby's new whistle. It was a bright sunny day on the island of Soda. All the engines chuffed cheerfully. Everyone was smiling. Everyone except Toby. Toby was at the steamworks. Toby's bell had stopped working. It was covered in rust and it didn't clang and chime anymore. It had to stay in the steamworks to be cleaned. So Toby was very sad. Victor didn't have another bell for Toby, so he had to be fitted with a new steam whistle. Easy does it, Kevin, my friend. Left a little? No. Right a little? Perfect. Very good, my friend. How does that feel, Toby? Toby thought the new whistle felt very strange. It was much bigger than his old bell. He was worried. I've never used a steam whistle before. James chuffed into the steamworks with Sir Topham hat. Hello, Toby. That's a three-chime steam whistle. I used to have one of those. This made Toby even more worried. Is it a good whistle? It's the best. It is the loudest whistle in the whole of Sodor. The loudest? Yes, it's loud and booming. Everyone will hear you coming. Toby didn't like this. He didn't like loud and booming noises. He liked the tingling-a-ling of his old bell. Toby, you must go to Knapford and collect Lady Hat. She is waiting, so don't be late. Yes, sir. So Toby chuffed off to Knapford Station with his new three-chime steam whistle. I wish I had my old bell back. I don't know how to use this new loud and booming three-chime steam whistle. Then an idea flew into Toby's funnel. If I puff slowly and carefully, I won't need to use my whistle at all. I can do all my jobs and wait for my old bell to be fixed. This made Toby feel much happier. Toby steamed slowly through Sodor. Gordon huffed and puffed impatiently behind him. Out of my way, Toby, you old steam tram. You're making me late. Later, some cows were on the tracks in front of Toby. He couldn't puff past them. Go away, cows, please. I need to chuff through. But the cows didn't take any notice of Toby. They didn't move. They were too busy mooing and chewing. Toby knew what he needed to do. He needed to blow his new steam whistle. But Toby was scared. I don't want to use this new three-chime steam whistle. I wish I had my little bell back. Then another idea flew into Toby's funnel. I know what I can do. I'll get help. So Toby reversed down the track to find help. Some farm workers were working in the field. Excuse me. Hello? Hello? The farm workers didn't hear Toby. Toby blew steam and rattled his rods. But the farm workers still didn't hear Toby. They were too far away. Bust my buffers. They can't hear me. Toby knew he should use his new steam whistle. But he was still too scared. I wish I had my little bell back. So Toby puffed on. Somewhere he had to find help. But Toby couldn't find anybody to help him. So he huffed back to the cows. I do hope the cows have gone back to their field now. But the cows hadn't gone back to their field. They were still mooing and chewing all over the tracks. Oh, no! Toby tried to biff them with his cow catcher, but they still wouldn't move. Oh, no, Henrietta! I think we're trapped! <gasps> Then there was trouble. Toby heard a noise that made his wheels wobble. Another engine is coming. They'll crash into the cows. The engine steamed around the corner. 
It was Thomas. Thomas was racing like the wind. His firebox was fuming, and his boiler was burning brightly. I have to tell Thomas about the cows. I'll have to use this new whistle. Toby closed his eyes. His firebox flared. Steam blew into his new three-chime steam whistle. It was the loudest whistle anyone had ever heard on Sodor. What was that? It was a three-chime steam whistle. They're the best whistles ever. I wonder who blew that? Thomas heard the three-chime steam whistle. Cinders and ashes, I must stop. He applied his brakes. Thomas screeched and skidded. Sparks flew and tracks trembled. Toby didn't dare look. Phew. Thank you, Toby. Your whistle told me there was trouble ahead. Toby felt very proud. I'm pleased I used my three-chime steam whistle. It was even louder than my bell. Thomas was proud of his friend Toby. Together, with their whistles and wish, Toby and Thomas moved the cows from the track. Then, Toby remembered Lady Hat. Fizzling fireboxes. I've forgotten all about Lady Hat. She's waiting for me at Knapford. I must puff faster than Gordon to chuff there on time. Don't worry, Toby. I'll puff with you. We're sure to make it together. Thomas and Toby puffed and puffed toward Knapford Station. Suddenly, Sir Topham had arrived. He was very cross. Toby, Lady Hat waited for a very long time. Now Gordon is taking her home. Toby was upset. He knew he hadn't been a really useful engine. I'm sorry, sir. Then, Toby stopped. He saw something ahead. There's a fallen tree across the tracks. And Gordon is steaming straight towards it. Oh, no! Don't worry, sir. I know just what to do. Toby bubbled his boiler and pumped his pistons. He blew his three chimes steam whistle as loudly and as boomingly as he could. Gordon heard Toby's whistle. He applied his brakes and screeched to a halt. Toby, did you blow that whistle so loudly? Yes, I did. It was my new three-chime steam whistle. For a steam tram, you have a lot of puff. Thank you. Well done, Toby. Toby couldn't have felt more proud. Good job, Toby. Toby was back at the steamworks. His little bell was ready. It glistened and gleamed as if it were brand new. Toby was happy. Bye-bye, big new steam whistle. Victor and Kevin had heard the news that Toby had saved Thomas and Gordon. Well, Toby, my friend, it sounds as if you had a very busy day. Did you like the new three-chime steam whistle? It was very useful. You can keep it if you like, my friend. No, thank you. My bell is the best of all. <laughs> Slippy Sodor. It was a very special day on the island of Sodor. The Mr. Bubbles clown show was coming to town. Mr. Bubbles was famous. He could blow the biggest bubbles ever seen. All the engines were happy and excited. Except for Thomas. He had a cracked funnel and had to puff to the steamworks for repairs. At the steamworks, everything was huffing and puffing and steaming and wishing. Everything except Thomas. He waited sadly on the turntable for Victor to arrive. Thomas didn't like it when he needed repairs. It meant waiting inside and not having fun out on his branch line. Don't look so miserable, Thomas. We'll find you a nice spare funnel and have you out and about in no time. Kevin, let's see what we have for our good friend Thomas. Yes, boss. Coming right up. Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Oh, Kevin. Well, that won't do at all, my friend. This funnel is much too small. Kevin, let's try something a little larger. Yes, boss. Right away, boss. 
Suffering Sodor, Kevin. What are you doing? Sorry, boss. It was a slip of the hook. Yes, we know, Kevin. We know. Try this one for size, Thomas. No, 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 no. This one is too large. We only have one more spare funnel, boss. I'll be back in two toots of a whistle. Let's hope it's a good fit, my friend, or you'll be here for quite a while. <sighs> here it is, Thomas. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. It was a slip of the hook. I know, Kevin. I know. Magnificent. A perfect fit. This funnel makes me feel silly. Not at all, my friend. It's... it's... splendid. It will help you puff very well until your old funnel is fixed. Now chuff along. I hear that Mr. Bubbles has a very special special for you at Brendam Docks. Thomas chuffed into Brendam. He was very unhappy. Mr. Bubbles was waiting. He was very happy to see Thomas. Hello, Thomas! Mr. Bubbles has a very important job for you, Thomas. This is my very special bubble liquid. It makes the biggest bubbles you have ever seen. I need it for my show this afternoon. Please take it to Knapford Station. So Thomas backed up slowly and carefully to the flatbed and was coupled up. Now you mustn't spill any of the liquid, Thomas. Puff slowly and carefully. Yes, sir. We'll meet you at Knapford. Then James chuffed up. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like James laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away as quickly as he could. He forgot all about going slowly and carefully. Later, Thomas stopped at a crossing. He saw Gordon. Hello, Thomas. Oh, that's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like Gordon laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Gordon as quickly as he could. He wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. Bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. But Thomas didn't notice. Sir Topham Hatt was driving Mr. Bubbles on the road. Then there was trouble. The car skidded and skated right into a muddy ditch. Thomas raced on. He stopped at a signal and saw Henry in a siding. Hello, Thomas. Oh, that's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't want a funny funnel. He wanted his old funnel back. And he didn't like Henry laughing at his funny funnel. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away from Henry as quickly as he could. He still wasn't thinking about going slowly and carefully. Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles drove toward a bridge. Slow down, Thomas! You're spilling my bubble liquid! But Thomas didn't hear them. More bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. Sir Topham Hatt's car skidded and skated right into a haystack. But Thomas didn't notice. He went even faster. And so did Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles. Thomas didn't see them, but he did see a red signal. Thomas put on his brakes. More bubble liquid splished out and splashed onto the road. Sir Topham Hatt's car skidded and skated right into a pond. But Thomas was too worried about his funny funnel to notice. He raced on towards Knapford. At last, Thomas puffed into Knapford, just as Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Bubbles arrived. Sir Topham Hatt was very cross. Thomas, you were going much too fast. The special bubble liquid splished and splashed out of the tank. And now the tank is empty. And it's almost time for my show to start. The children will be very disappointed.
Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. The only special bubble liquid left is at Brendam Docks. Now, there isn't time to pick it up before the show. Yes, there is. I'm sure I can puff to Brendam and back in time for your show. <laughs> Very well, Thomas. But this time, you must be careful. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Soon, Thomas arrived back at Brendam Docks. A new tank of bubble liquid was loaded onto his flatbed, and Thomas puffed carefully away. Thomas saw Edward at a crossing. Hello, Thomas. That's a funny funnel. <laughs> Thomas didn't like Edward laughing at his funny funnel. But this time, Thomas didn't pump his pistons and race away from Edward as quickly as he could. He chuffed carefully on to Napford. Then, Thomas puffed past some children. The children saw his funny funnel. They were excited. They thought Thomas was going to be part of Mr. Bubbles' show. Thomas was surprised. He gave the children an extra loud toot. The children laughed even more. Thomas liked to see the children laughing. They're laughing at my funny funnel. It makes them happy. And that made Thomas happy. Thomas steamed back into Napa. The children cheered. Well done, Thomas. You haven't spilled one drop of my special bubble liquid. And you're just in time for my show. Later, the children clapped and cheered at the Mr. Bubbles Clown Show. They had never seen such big bubbles. Then, the children spotted that Thomas's funny funnel looked just like Mr. Bubbles' hat. Thank you, Thomas, the funniest engine on Sodor. Soon, everyone was laughing, and Thomas most of all. <laughs> Percy's Parcel. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining in a bright blue sky, and all the engines were very excited. There was to be a special party. It was Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had a special for Thomas. Thomas, you are to collect passengers for the party from Brendam Docks. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. Percy hoped that Sir Topham Hatt had a special for him, but he didn't. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure you'll have a special later. But Percy still felt sad. Mavis rolled by and stopped. She could see Percy was unhappy. What's wrong, Percy? I don't have a special. Everybody else does. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure Sir Topham Hatt will come back with a special special just for you. And when he does, be sure to tell me all about it. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt did come back. Percy was surprised. Percy, you have the most important special of all. You must collect my mother's special birthday parcel from Brendam Docks. Then you must deliver it to the birthday party at Knapford Station. Percy beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Percy was excited. Mavis was right. Percy puffed into Brendam Docks. He gasped. The parcel was the most special parcel he had ever seen. Percy was so proud, his firebox fizzed. I must show Mavis straight away. She will be very proud of me. Thomas was at Brendam. He was pleased for his friend. Percy, you have the most important special of all. I know. I'm going to show Mavis my special special straight away. But don't you have to go to Knapford Station? Percy didn't want to listen to Thomas. I have plenty of time to puff to Knapford. First, I will show Mavis my special special. So, Percy set off for the quarry as quickly as he could puff. Percy steamed into the quarry. He looked for Mavis. Mavis was busy. 
Rocky was loading heavy crates onto freight cars, and Mavis was shunting them. It was hard work. Hello, Mavis. Hello, Percy. Look at my special special. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop now. I'm too busy. Don't worry, Mavis. I'll wait. Look out, Percy! But it was too late. Oh, no! Rocky dropped his heavy load of slate. Everyone was lost in a thick black cloud of slate dust. At last, the dust cleared. Mavis, Rocky, and Percy were covered in thick gray dust, and so was Percy's special special. Percy was upset. Bubbling boilers! Look at the birthday parcel! What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. At last, an idea flew into his funnel. I'll go to the washdown. My special special will be cleaned there as good as new. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to Rocky. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I still have plenty of time. So, Percy steamed quickly away. Percy huffed and puffed to the washdown. James was already there having a polish. My, my, Percy, whatever happened to you? Percy felt very silly. I'd like a very good wash, please. The workmen got straight to work. Water and soapy bubbles sprayed everywhere. Soon, Percy was gleaming green again. But his special special looked terrible. Bubbling boilers! The birthday parcel is wetter than wet! What am I going to do? Percy thought as quickly as he could. At last, another idea flew into his funnel. I'll take my special special to the Sodor Steamworks. Victor will help me. His hot air blowers will dry the birthday parcel. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to James. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I'm sure I still have plenty of time. And Percy chuffed quickly away. Percy raced like the wind to the steamworks. Percy looked for Victor at the steamworks. He couldn't find him anywhere. But he did find a workman. I'd like to be dried as quickly as you can, please. The workman was happy to help. Hot air whooshed and whirred all over Percy and all over his special special. Soon, the workman had finished. Percy felt very pleased, until he saw the birthday parcel. Wobbling wheels! It's all crinkled and crumpled. What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could, but this time, no ideas flew into his funnel at all. So Percy steamed sadly away. Percy clickety-clacked slowly along the track. Now, he didn't want to show Mavis his special special. He had spoiled Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday parcel, and he couldn't go to the party at Knapford now. Percy didn't want anyone to see him, so he chuffed into a siding to hide. He felt terrible. Then he heard Mavis and Edward chuff to the junction. Hello, Mavis. You look happy. I am. I've just picked up these brand new crates. Suddenly, Percy stopped feeling sad, and he started to listen very carefully. Brand new crates? Victor had just delivered them to the steamworks. I've never pulled brand new crates before. Goodbye, Edward. A brand new crate is just what I need. Percy pumped his pistons and puffed away to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Hello, my friend. How can I help you? I've just seen Mavis with brand new crates. May I have one, please? Well, what for? To put my birthday parcel in. Well, of course you can, Percy. That made Percy very happy. Thank you, Victor. Soon, a new bright red crate was sitting on Percy's flatbed. This will be the grandest parcel Sir Topham Hatt's mother has ever been given. I must hurry now. Everyone will be waiting. 
Thank you, Victor. And Percy puffed proudly out of the steamworks. Sir Topham Hatt and his mother were waiting at Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Then Percy puffed in. The brand new bright red birthday parcel looked wonderful. Everyone cheered. Happy birthday, ma'am. Here's your very special birthday present. Sir Topham Hatt's mother beamed, and even Sir Topham Hatt smiled. As the workmen opened the crate, everyone wanted to see what the present was. Sir Topham Hatt's mother was most excited of all. Then everyone gasped. It was a beautiful portrait of Sir Topham Hatt's mother. Oh, my Bertram, what a wonderful surprise. I'm very happy. <laughs> That's the most special special I've ever seen, Percy. Percy smiled from footplate to fender. He was sure he was the happiest engine of the biggest present of all. For all the engines on the island of Sodor, there are jobs to be done visitors to meet, and friends to greet. One day, there was a very special friend to greet. Hero was coming back to Sodor. He was to help with the summer visitors. Thomas and Percy waited for him at Brendam Docks. I'm so excited, my firebox is fizzing, and my boiler is bubbling. Hero, our special friend, is coming back to Sodor. Hello, my good friends. I have missed you. We missed you too, Hero. The three engines tooted and hooted with happiness. Welcome back, Hero. First, you must go to the steamworks. Victor will check your engine after your long journey. Of course, sir. Every day, I want to be a really useful engine. Then, you must go to Knapford Station. I will meet you there. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Hero puffed proudly away. I want there to be a welcome party for Hero at Knapford. Percy, you must collect Lady Hat and bring her to the party. Thomas, you must tell the engines to chuff quickly to Knapford for the party. Then, Sir Topham had left. Thomas and Percy were excited. Oh my, a welcome party will make Hero very happy. A welcome present would make Hero even happier. That's a good idea. I must go now, Thomas. Lady Hat will be waiting. Then, Thomas steamed slowly away. I'm sure I'll find something special for Hero. I'll look as I puff round the island, telling my friends about the party. Thomas clickety-clacked along the track. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at Farmer McCall's farm. So, Thomas pumped his pistons and raced to Farmer McCall's farm. Emily was there. She was collecting straw. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's exciting. Good luck, Thomas. Emily puffed away. Thomas didn't tell her about the party at Knapford. He was too busy looking for a welcome present. Thomas saw the big brown barn. Perhaps Hero would like a barn. He could keep special things safe in a barn. But the barn is too big. And Thomas steamed slowly away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then, another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at the quarry. So, Thomas huffed happily to the quarry. Mavis, James, Toby, and Henry were there. They were busy shunting slate cars. Hero has come back. 
I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's a wonderful idea, Thomas. Henry, James, and Toby chuffed away to shunt freight cars. Thomas didn't tell them about the party at Knapford. Thomas looked all around the quarry, but all he could see was Sodor Slate. Slate is very special to Sodor, but Slate is too small to be a present. I must look for something else. So Thomas chuffed away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then Thomas gasped. The steam works. I'm sure there'll be something special there. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully to the steam works. Hello, Kevin. I'm looking for a welcome present for Hero. It has to be something special. Thomas saw an old bell. I'm sure Hero would like a bell. Then everyone would hear him coming. Good idea, Thomas. Good idea. But when Kevin picked up the bell, it clanged and clanked. It rang and rattled. Trembling tracks. That's too noisy. Hero will soon be at Knapford to see Sir Topham Hatt. Bust my buffers. I must hurry. Thomas raced out of the steamworks. He didn't tell Victor and Kevin about the party either. Thomas raced into Knapford Station. Hero was waiting, all alone. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes! I haven't found a welcome present for Hero, and I haven't told anyone about the party. This won't make Hero happy. Thomas felt terrible. Then. His boiler bubbled, and his wheels whirred. Hello, Hero. Goodbye, Hero. And Thomas steamed swiftly out of the station. Thomas puffed to Farmer McColls. Emily, chuff as fast as you can to Knapford. Sir Topham Hat is having a welcome party for Hero. Tell everyone you pass. Thomas, I've had a marvelous idea for a special present for Hero. I'm sure he would like a bright, shiny dome. Victor must have one. Thomas was stern. Thank you, Emily. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Mavis, Toby, James, and Henry were still at the quarry. You must all chuff to Knapford as fast as you can for Hero's welcome party. Thomas, I think I know exactly what Hero would like as a special present: a new glowing lamp. That would be very special. Thomas was firm. Thank you, Henry. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas steamed swiftly away to the steamworks. Kevin, please tell all the engines to race to Knapford for Hero's party. My friend, Kevin and I have been thinking. What about a new shiny buffer for Hero? I think Hero would find that very special, don't you think so, boss?、Uh, Thomas. Thomas knew what he thought. I think now is not the time to find presents. Thank you, but you must tell the engines to hurry, please. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Thomas clickety clacked down the track this way and that, telling his friends all about the party. Thomas puffed into Knapford Station. His face was red and his firebox glowed. Thomas, where have you been? Hero's welcome party is almost over. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to find you a welcome present, Hero. Something special from Sodor. But I couldn't find anything. I'm sorry. Hero smiled. Thomas, my friend. You must not worry. My welcome present is right here. Being with my friends is the biggest present of all, and the most special present from Sodo. There is nothing more special. Then Thomas smiled and smiled. He knew Hero was right, and so did all his friends. Double trouble. All the engines were very excited. 
They chuffed cheerfully and chattered as they clattered along the tracks. Today was Sir Topham Hatt's birthday, and there was to be the grandest birthday party on Sodor. Thomas had a very special special. He was to pick up Sir Topham Hatt and Lady Hatt for the party. As Thomas approached Maithwaite Station, he gasped. Ahead, he could see Sir Topham Hatt already on the platform. Cinders and ashes, I must be late. Thomas pulled into the station. He was worried. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I was early. Sir Topham Hatt turned around. Thomas gasped. <gasps> Sir Topham Hatt had a mustache. Thomas was so surprised he nearly popped a piston. Thomas, my good friend, you're looking perfectly polished today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled so loudly his top hat wobbled. Thomas was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never chuckled so loudly that his top hat wobbled, and Sir Topham Hatt never called Thomas his good friend. I know, Thomas. Let's go to the Whispering Woods. It's one of my favorite spots. We have plenty of time before the party. All aboard! Now Thomas was even more puzzled. He wanted to ask about Sir Topham Hatt's new mustache and why he was acting so strangely. But Thomas didn't want to look silly. So he decided not to ask. Thomas pulled away from Maithway Station and chuffed towards the Whispering Woods. Thomas puffed up to the Whispering Woods. Edward was there. Edward had brought children to visit the woods. Then he was to take them to the party. Hello, Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look worried. Thomas was worried. But before he could explain, Sir Topham Hatt climbed down. Marvelous! What fun! Please, sir. Uh, we can't stay long. The children mustn't be late for the party. Oh, party smarty, Thomas. We have plenty of time. You worry too much. And Sir Topham Hatt strode off. Hello, children. Who'd like a game of hide-and-seek? Did Sir Topham Hatt say a game of hide-and-seek? Yes, he did. And Thomas's wheels wobbled with worry. Sir Topham Hatt played hide-and-seek for a long time. He was very happy. So were the children. Edward was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never plays hide-and-seek. I know. And what's that on his face? A mustache. It just appeared. Today, Sir Topham Hatt doesn't seem like Sir Topham Hatt at all. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt came back. Thomas wanted to ask him if he was feeling all right. But he didn't want to look silly. Thomas knew that silly engines weren't really useful engines, so he didn't ask any questions. We must hurry now, sir. We'll be late. And so will the children. But Sir Topham Hatt wasn't worried. Don't hurry the children, Edward. Let them play. Edward was so surprised his boiler bubbled. Then Sir Topham Hatt jumped aboard Annie and waved to all the children. Thomas's wheels clickety-clacked. He puffed and he huffed along the track. He knew they were late for the party. Thomas stopped at the junction. Suddenly, Sir Topham Hatt jumped out of Annie and climbed up to the signal box. I won't be a moment, Thomas. Thomas was amazed. So was the signalman. Sir Topham Hatt never came into his signal box. Hello there. May I have a turn? Thomas looked up. He saw Sir Topham Hatt pull a lever. Then Thomas heard Gordon's whistle. Cinders and ashes. Here comes Gordon. Gordon had all the important visitors aboard the express. He was taking them to the party. With a clang and a clatter, the points changed. Gordon and the express were no longer on the express track. They were now on a branch line heading away from the party. Thomas heard Sir Topham Hatt whoop for joy. Hooray! Fizzling fireboxes. I must ask Sir Topham Hatt why he's being so strange. But when Sir Topham Hatt came down from the signal box, Thomas didn't say anything. He still didn't want to look silly. What fun! All aboard, Thomas! Thomas raced towards Maithwaite. Lady Hatt would be waiting. 
They were very late. Thomas was worried. First, Sir Topham Hatt had a mustache. Next, he wanted to play hide-and-seek with the children. Then he sent Gordon off the express line and away from the party. Hmm. Sir Topham Hatt is acting very strangely indeed. Thomas puffed into Maithwaite. The station master was cross. Thomas, you're late. Sir Topham and Lady Hatt had to go to the party and Bertie the bus. But Bertie hasn't arrived at the party. Neither have the children or the very important visitors. Thomas was puzzled. If Sir Topham Hatt is on Bertie, then who's on board Annie? Just then, Thomas's passengers stepped down. Thomas knew he had to ask a question he hadn't asked before, even if he looked silly. Excuse me, Sir Topham. You don't quite seem yourself today. Is everything all right? Thomas's passenger beamed brightly. Yes, Thomas, but I'm not Sir Topham Hatt. I'm Sir Loam Hatt, Sir Topham's brother. Thomas was amazed. That explained everything. But he wished now that he had asked his question earlier. Now there was no time to waste if he wanted to be a really useful engine. Bertie must have broken down. We must find him right away. Sir Topham Hatt's brother was very excited. Hooray! Another game of hide and seek! Now Thomas was stern. No, Sir Loam Hat. I have to work hard and quickly. Otherwise, your brother's party will be spoiled. Sir Loam boarded Annie, and Thomas puffed away. Thomas found Bertie the bus. Smoke billowed from his engine. Bertie looked very unhappy. So did Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Thomas, where have you been? Just then, Sir Topham Hatt's brother stepped down from Annie. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Oh, no, Loam. Have you been up to your old tricks again? Absolutely right, Topham. I've been having a wonderful time with Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt didn't think this was funny at all. Loam, you have caused confusion and delay. We must hurry. Thomas delivered Sir Topham Hatt, his brother, and Lady Hatt to the party, just in time. The party looked grand. But Thomas couldn't stay. He had work to do. First, Thomas chuffed to the Whispering Woods. Edward was very happy to see Thomas. Go straight to the party with the children, Edward. Sir Topham Hatt is waiting. It was his brother, Sir Loam, who was playing hide and seek. Next, Thomas found Gordon. Gordon was huffing and puffing as slowly as a snail down a rickety branch line. Ugh, oh, the indignity. Hurry, Gordon, to the next express line. Race like a rocket to the party. That made Gordon very happy. At last, Thomas chuffed back to the party. Edward and Gordon were already there. What a wonderful party! And it was. Everyone was laughing. Then Thomas and his friends heard something very extraordinary. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled even louder than his brother. And that made Thomas happiest of all. Thomas and the runaway kite. It was a bright blue morning on the island of Sodor. It was the day of the Sodor Kite Festival. Soon, the sky would be full of kites of all shapes and colors. The engines were very excited about the kite festival. Thomas was the most excited of all, because Thomas liked kites best of all. Thomas puffed into Brendam Docks. He had a very special special. He was to collect the winner's cup for the kite festival. Thomas gasped when he saw the cup. Oh, my! That's the most beautiful cup I've ever seen! Thomas, you must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Lady Hat will give it to the winner at tea time. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. I will chuff straight there. Thomas puffed proudly. He wanted everyone to see that he was pulling the winner's cup. Thomas pulled up to a junction. High in the sky, above the treetops, he saw a kite. Fizzling fireboxes. What a wonderful kite. 
I hope I will see it again. Thomas huffed and chuffed to the top of Gordon's Hill. Then he gasped. There's that wonderful kite again. The kite belonged to Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren. <laughs> they wanted to win the cup at the kite festival. Charlie puffed out. Look at that kite swoop through the air. Look, there's Thomas. Suddenly, a gust of wind pulled at the kite. The kite flew up, 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 and away. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren watched. They were very sad. Thomas wanted to help them. Don't be sad. I'll chase after your kite and bring it back to you. This made the children very happy. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can catch up with your kite. I'll help you, Thomas. No, thank you, Charlie. I'm much faster than you. I can chase this kite all by myself. So, Thomas didn't go straight to Knapford with the winner's cup. He chuffed off, chasing Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's runaway kite. The wind blew the kite far down the tracks. Thomas whooshed and whooshed. His boiler bubbled. His coal crackled. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. Then the wind blew the kite out of sight. Where has the kite gone? Hello, Thomas. You're huffing hard. Hello, Edward. I'm chasing Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. How exciting. Can I help? No, thank you, Edward. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can chase their kite all by myself. At last, Thomas caught up with the kite. He was excited. Then, the wind blew the kite another way. Cinders and ashes, come back, Mr. Kite, please! Thomas chased and raced. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. Then the wind blew the kite up over the bridge. Emily was on the bridge. She saw the kite. She was surprised. Hello, Thomas. Are you chasing that kite? Yes, Emily. It is blown away from Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren. I've promised I'll catch it. Can I help? No, thank you, Emily. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. I can chase it all by myself. And Thomas whooshed on under the bridge. Thomas clattered and clacked. I must keep up with the runaway kite. I'll puff and I'll huff with all of my might. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. What's wrong, Thomas? Your cheeks are as red as James's boiler. I'm chasing that kite. Let me help. I can chase it with you. No, thank you. I can chase this kite all by myself. I'm the fastest engine on Sodor. So, Percy chuffed off, and Thomas puffed on. At last, the wind dropped. The kite landed in front of Thomas near a junction. Thomas was pleased. Bubbling boilers, I've caught up with you now, Mr. Kite. Thomas whooshed across the junction towards the kite. Then there was trouble. Thomas started juddering and jittering. The flame in Thomas's firebox flickered and fizzled out. Thomas had burned all his coal chasing the runaway kite. Oh my, oh no, I've run out of coal. Then the wind blew again. The kite flew high in the sky and was gone. I can't puff anymore. I can't chase the kite. I'm not the fastest engine on Sodor. I've broken my promise to the children and I haven't delivered the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Thomas felt terrible. It's all my fault. Suddenly, Thomas heard an engine chuffing around the corner. 
It was Charlie. What's wrong, Thomas? I ran out of coal trying to chase the kite. I thought you were the fastest engine on Sodor. I'm not. I was silly to think I could catch the kite on my own. Will you help me, Charlie? Of course I will, Thomas. Charlie gave Thomas some of his coal. Soon, Thomas's firebox was burning brightly. Thank you, Charlie. I'm late. I must deliver the winner's cup to Knapford Station. Can you look for the kite, please? With all my huff and chuff, Thomas. So, Thomas puffed to Knapford with the winner's cup. On his way to Knapford, Thomas stopped at a junction. Percy, Emily, and Edward were waiting. You look sad, Thomas. I didn't catch Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite. Will you all help me? Of course we will, Thomas. Right away. With no delay. Thomas's friends were happy to help him, and Thomas was happy to be helped. Thomas arrived at Knapford Station with the Winners' Cup. Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren raced over. Hi, Thomas. They hoped Thomas had found their kite. I haven't found your kite, but all my friends are looking for it now. Come with me. So the children climbed cheerfully on board. Thomas puffed to a junction. Suddenly, the kite flew in front of Thomas. There's the kite. Emily, Percy, Edward, and Charlie chuffed to the junction. The kite danced between them. Then it caught its tail on the signal. Hooray! We've caught the kite. The engines tooted. The children cheered. <laughs> With the help of my friends. We caught the kite, and later that day at the kite festival, Sir Topham Hatt's grandchildren's kite danced best of all, as the wind blew it high up in the sky, and Thomas smiled and smiled. The early bird on the island of Sodor. All of the engines on Sir Topham Hatt's railway are busy. Gordon pulls the express. Percy delivers the mail, and Thomas puffs and chuffs cheerfully on his branch line. One morning, Thomas's fireman fanned his firebox ready for work. Thomas saw that his best friend Percy wasn't there. Good morning, James. Have you seen Percy? No, I have too much to do to see Percy. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas. Percy has popped a piston. He has to go to the steamworks to be fixed. Percy won't be able to deliver the mail tomorrow morning. You must do it for him. Thomas was excited. He had never delivered the mail before. He tooted his whistle loudly. Yes, sir. I've always wanted to deliver the mail. Make sure you do a good job, Thomas. Of course I will, sir. Don't worry, sir. Then Thomas puffed proudly away to his branch line. Thomas stopped at a crossing. Gordon was there. Percy is being fixed. Tomorrow, I'm going to deliver the mail run for him. Percy's mail run? Have you asked Percy how to do it? Don't worry, Gordon. I know all about delivering the mail. <laughs> do you indeed? Then the gate opened, and Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas worked hard all day. That night, he went to see Percy at the steamworks. Percy didn't look happy. Is your piston fixed, Percy? No, it's still broken. Don't worry, I'm going to do your mail run tomorrow. Thank you, Thomas. Shall I tell you what to do? I know what to do, Percy. Now, I have to go to sleep. I shall be up very early. Well, if you're sure, Thomas. Very sure, Percy. I have to go back to Tidmouth now. I need lots of sleep. Goodbye. Percy watched as Thomas chuffed away. The next morning, 
Thomas woke up very early. He felt very proud to be pulling the mail trucks. There wasn't a peep to be heard as Thomas chuffed across the island. Everyone was fast asleep. First, Thomas puffed to the quarry. I must let the quarry manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle very loudly. And then he chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas hadn't seen that his loud whistle had woken up Mavis. <sighs> Who's making that noise? Next, Thomas chuffed to the docks. I must let the dock manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was excited. He blew his whistle even louder. <sighs> and then he chuffed cheerfully away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that his good morning whistle had woken Cranky up. <sighs> Who woke me up? This is fun! Lastly, Thomas steamed into the steamworks. I must let the steamworks manager know that the mail is here. Thomas was so excited, he blew his whistle louder than ever. Oh. And then he huffed happily away. What Thomas hadn't seen was that he had woken Victor and Kevin up. Oh, what's that noise, boss? Uh, who knows, Kevin, who knows? Some early bird. Thomas worked hard all morning. Everywhere Thomas went, he blew his whistle loudly. Delivering the mail is fun! Soon, Thomas had delivered all the mail. It was time for him to puff back to Tidmouth Sheds for a rest. As Thomas passed through the quarry, he saw Mavis. Her freight cars were being loaded with slate. Then there was trouble. Mavis hadn't lined up her freight cars under the hopper. Slate spilled everywhere. That's strange. Mavis never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Mavis was fast asleep under the hopper. That's why she had put the freight cars in the wrong place. Next, Thomas passed through the docks. Cranky was unloading some big crates from a ship. Then there was trouble. Cranky dropped the crates. They fell to the ground with a smash and a crash. That's strange. Cranky never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Cranky had fallen fast asleep. That's why he had dropped the crates. Thomas pulled into Tidmouth's sheds. He wanted to tell Percy all about the mail delivery, but Percy wasn't there. Sir Topham Hatt was there. He was cross. Someone woke Mavis up too early by tooting too loudly on their whistle. Then someone woke up Cranky at the docks and Victor at the steamworks. Now they have all made silly mistakes. Thomas knew he had woken everyone up with his cheerful whistle. He felt terrible. I'm very sorry, sir. It was me. Then, Thomas, as Percy is still not fixed, you must do a better job tomorrow. I will, sir. I promise, sir. Then Gordon arrived. He had heard all about Thomas's trouble with the mail run. You were right, Gordon. Delivering the mail is a hard job. I should have asked Percy what to do. And this time, I will. That evening, Thomas visited Percy at the steamworks. He asked him all about delivering the mail, and Percy told him all about being quiet. The next morning, Thomas set off early, pulling the mail cars. He stopped at the quarry. This time, he didn't blow his whistle. 
He puffed very quietly so that he didn't wake Mavis. Next, Thomas stopped at the docks. He didn't blow his whistle here either. And he didn't wake Cranky up. Lastly, Thomas puffed into the steamworks. He dropped off the mail, and he didn't blow his whistle once. Victor stayed fast asleep. But Percy had woken up early to see his best friend, Thomas. Well done, Thomas. You did everything right. Thank you, Percy. Now I know the most important thing about delivering the mail. You have to do it quietly. Percy was so happy for his friend that he wanted to toot out loud. Then he looked at Thomas. Thomas had fallen fast asleep. Sleep well, Thomas. And Thomas snored the sleep of an engine who had done a very good job. Thomas and the pigs. There are lots and lots of farms on the island of Sodor. There are farms with sheep. There are farms with cows. There are farms with goats. Thomas likes visiting all the farms. But his favorite farm of all was Farmer Trotter's pig farm. Thomas liked their curly tails and the funny noises they made. Thomas liked to visit Farmer Trotter's pig farm as often as he could. One day, Thomas was watching the pigs roll in the mud. Farmer Trotter was happy to see Thomas. Hello, Farmer Trotter. Hello, Thomas. I have some very special news. One of my pigs is going to have piglets today. Thomas was excited. I can't wait to see them. I need some soft straw for the piglets. I'd like you to go to Farmer McCall's right now to collect it. He will be waiting for you. Thomas was happy to help. Yes, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away with his empty flatbed. On his way to Farmer McCall's, Thomas thought about the pigs. I'm sure the piglets will like the soft straw. I wonder if there's anything else they like. Thomas puffed up to the dairy. He saw Percy. Thomas told Percy all about the piglets. How exciting! I wish I could see them, but I have to deliver this milk. Thomas looked at the milk churns. An idea flew into his funnel. I'm sure the piglets would like some milk. May I have some? Of course you can, Thomas. So the milk churns were loaded onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you, Percy. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And he steamed away. Thomas felt pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then, Thomas saw James. James was at an orchard. The trees were full of juicy red apples. Hello, James. Hello, Thomas. Thomas told James all about the piglets. The piglets will soon be born. I must collect some soft straw for them. I wish I could see the piglets, but I have to deliver these boxes of apples to the village. Thomas looked at the juicy red apples. I'm sure the piglets would like some juicy red apples. May I have some? Of course you can. So Thomas's flatbed was loaded with lots and lots of juicy red apples. Thank you, James. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. Thomas chuffed quickly away. He felt very pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. 
Then Thomas saw some children. They were collecting shiny brown Hello, chestnuts. Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Thomas told the children all about the piglets. They were very excited. <laughs> I'm sure the piglets would like some shiny brown chestnuts to eat. Please, may I have some for them? The children were delighted to give Thomas some of their shiny brown chestnuts. Thank you. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And Thomas puffed away. Bye. He felt even more pleased. At last, Thomas chuffed to Farmer McCall's farm. Farmer McCall was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, you're late. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Farmer McCall. I stopped to collect some milk, some juicy red apples, and some shiny brown chestnuts for the piglets. Farmer McCall looked at Thomas's flatbed. He saw the milk, the juicy red apples, and shiny brown chestnuts. Your flatbed is full. You have no room for straw now. Fizzling fireboxes. I didn't think about that. I hope the piglets will like the milk, the apples, and the chestnuts just as much as straw. I must puff straight back to Farmer Trotter's. The piglets will be born soon. So Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the farm. Farmer Trotter was waiting. He looked at Thomas's full flatbed. He was surprised. Thomas, where's the soft straw? I thought the piglets would like these things just as much as straw. No, Thomas. Piglets need soft straw, and they're about to be born. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I'll empty my flatbed, then I'll puff back to Farmer McCall's as fast as I can. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. The piglets will need it by the end of the day. Thomas saw Percy at the water tower. Thomas, I know something else the piglets would like. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. Bye, Thomas. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Next, Thomas saw James at a junction. Hello, Thomas. I've been thinking about the piglets. I'm sure they'd like... I'm sorry, James. I can't stop. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Thomas whooshed and he wished. He huffed and he puffed until he arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. It was late. Hello, Farmer McCall. Now I have plenty of room for the soft straw for the piglets. Could you load it right now? Of course I can, Thomas. Thank you, Farmer McCall. I must hurry. Thomas's pistons pumped and his axles ached. I must puff fast. There's no time for delay. The piglets need straw by the end of the day. At last, Thomas arrived at Farmer Trotter's pig farm. It was now nearly nighttime. Thomas saw that the pigs had gone. <gasps> Cinders and ashes. I'm too late. You're just in time, Thomas. I need that soft straw right away. Farmer Trotter unloaded the straw from Thomas's flatbed. And he took it away to make a nice soft bed for the piglets. The piglets have just been born. Thomas was delighted. Bubbling boilers! Look how small they are and how sweet. Thomas could see the piglets really like the soft straw. Aw, that little piglet is looking at me. I think I'll call him Thomas. Thomas was so happy. His axles tingled and his boiler bubbled. <coughs> Henry's Good Deeds. There are lots of beautiful birds on the island of Sodor. 
The engines know their names and their songs. One day, the engines were especially excited. A new bird had been seen on the island. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had important news. The Sodor Warbler has arrived back on the island. Very few people have ever seen this bird, so a lot of visitors will be coming to our island. You will all be very busy taking them to spot the bird. Remember your passenger cars at all times, and remember not to frighten the warbler. Henry was worried for the warbler. Do you think the Sodor warbler will be scared of engines? No, Henry, not if you're really useful. And I need you to be really useful. Yes, sir. You must deliver a nesting pole to Bluff's Cove. Percy was puzzled. Um, what's a nesting pole? It's a tall pole with a shelf on top. Birds build their nests on it. Percy liked this idea. Do you understand, Henry? Yes, sir. I will deliver the pole straight away. Good. We hope the Sodor Warbler will make its home here once more. That's a very exciting special, Henry. Henry was happy. He puffed away proudly. Later, Henry clickety-clacked along the track. Ahead, he could see Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had stopped. That's strange. Henry shoved slowly up to Thomas. Is anything wrong, Thomas? No, Henry. I'm letting Farmer McCall cross with his sheep. Henry could see the sheep tripping and tapping across the tracks. Thomas, you helped me. That's a good deed. Well done. You're welcome, Farmer McCall. Thomas chuffed away cheerfully. Henry puffed and puzzled. I would like to help someone. They will call it a good deed, and they will say, well done, Henry. This made Henry feel very happy. I'm sure I can deliver the nesting pole and do good deeds. So Henry huffed happily on. Soon, Henry saw Farmer Trotter's pink pigs. They were snuffling and sniffing sadly at the side of the track. Hmm, those pigs don't look very happy. Then, Henry saw that the pigs were looking at the muddy field on the other side of the tracks. I know what's wrong. Those pigs want to roll in the muddy field. If I stop here, those pigs can cross safely. They won't be scared anymore. So, Henry stopped. And the pigs tripped and trotted across the tracks. Soon, the pigs weren't pink anymore. They were brown, muddy, and very happy. Farmer Trotter wasn't happy at all. I wanted pink pigs to take to the county fair. Henry was sorry. Oh dear, Farmer Trotter is cross. I didn't help at all. Suddenly, an idea flew into Henry's funnel. I'll reverse back down the track. Then the pigs will have more room to cross. Henry pumped his pistons. His wheels whirred. He puffed steam and he chuffed backwards. This should help, Farmer Trotter. But it didn't help. The pigs were scared by Henry's steam and the whir of his wheels. They scattered and clattered into the apple crates. The apples rolled everywhere. This made the pigs very happy. They munched and scrunched the rosy red apples. But now they wouldn't move from the tracks. That made Farmer Trotter even more cross. Bust my buffers. My idea wasn't a good deed at all. Just then, Thomas puffed up on the down line. Annie and Clarabelle were full of visitors to see the Sodor Warbler. Cinders and ashes. How am I going to puff through? The Sodor Warbler has been spotted in the Fenland Fields. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, Thomas. I was trying to help Farmer Trotter. I'm sure I can help you. I'll take your visitors to the Fenland Fields. We'll be there in good time. 
Thomas thought this was a good idea. Thank you, Henry. The visitors were surprised. They stepped and scurried through the pigs to Henry's passenger car. Henry felt pleased. I'm sure this is a good deed, and I'm sure I still have time to deliver the nesting pole. Henry puffed and huffed his hardest all the way to the Fenlin Fields. Here we are. Watch out for the warbler. The visitors were very excited. They opened the carriage doors carefully. They didn't want to scare the soda warbler away. Henry felt very happy. At last, I've been helpful. I've done a good deed. Henry tooted a loud goodbye. Then there was trouble. A colorful bird flapped and flew from a tree high into the sky and away. It was the Sodor Warbler. The visitors moaned and groaned. Fizzling fireboxes! The bird was scared of my loud whistle. Henry steamed sadly away. I wanted to help the pigs. I wanted to help Farmer Trotter. I wanted to help the visitors, but I haven't helped anybody. I've done no good deeds, and I haven't delivered the nesting pole. Henry felt terrible. Henry huffed towards Bluff's Cove. He had to deliver the nesting pole. I don't think anyone is ever going to say, "Well done, Henry," to me. Henry waited at a junction. His wheels wobbled with worry. Now I'm sure I'll be late with the nesting pole. Sir Topham Hat will be cross with me. Oh dear! Oh dear! Suddenly, a colorful bird flew from a tree. Henry was too sad to smile at the bird. The bird landed on Henry's buffer. At least I can give that bird a rest and a ride. So. Henry and the beautiful bird chuffed on towards Bluff's Cove. Henry puffed to the halt. A lot of visitors were waiting. They were hoping to see the Sodo Warbler. I hope they'll be pleased that I have delivered the nesting pole. But the visitors weren't just pleased. They were amazed. They smiled and pointed and took out their cameras. Henry was surprised. Oh. The visitors seem very pleased to see me. I can't think why. After all, no one has said, "Well done, Henry." Well done, Henry. You have brought the soda warbler to us. Hooray for Henry! Henry blinked and blushed. The bird I carried on my buffer was the soda warbler. Then Thomas arrived with more visitors. Well done, Henry. Henry was so proud, his firebox fizzed and his boiler bubbled. And this time, I wasn't even trying to do a good deed. Soon, the nesting pole was up. The Sodor Warbler looked snug and sleepy in its nest at the top. I think our friend likes its new home. Welcome home, Mr. Warbler, <laughs> and well done, Henry. <sighs> Playtime. All the engines on the island of Sodor are very happy. They are all pleased to work on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. There is always something new and exciting to look forward to, like the day the famous singer Alicia Botti came to give a concert at the town hall. Thomas met Percy at the washdown. His boiler bubbled with pride. Hello, Percy. I have a very special special. I must meet Alicia Botti at the docks. Then I have to take her straight to the town hall for a grand concert. That's exciting! I have news too. Someone else is arriving at the docks. Thomas was puzzled. Charlie, the new engine. Thomas hadn't heard about Charlie. What's so special about Charlie? He's the favorite engine of the mainland controller. Everyone says he is the most fun engine ever. Even more fun than you, Thomas. Percy chuffed cheerfully away. Bumpers and buffers. I don't think any engine is more fun than me. And Thomas puffed off to the docks, his wheels whirring with worry. Thomas collected Alicia Botti at the docks. Miss Botti looked very grand. 
I'm pleased to be traveling with you, Thomas. Thomas's pistons popped with pride. Then he saw Charlie. Charlie's smaller than me, and he certainly doesn't look more fun than me. Hello, are you Thomas? Yes, I am. I'm Charlie. I've heard a lot about you. You have? The engines on the mainland say you're even more fun than me. Thomas was surprised. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Charlie has a busy first day. Edward has broken down. Charlie must pick up Edward's freight cars of seats from the steamworks. Then he has to collect ice cream from the dairy and red carpet from Knapford Station. If Charlie needs help, I'm sure you will look after him. Yes, sir. Yippee! Want to come with me? Why? It'll be fun. Sorry, I'm busy. I heard you were a fun engine. Maybe you're not fun at all. Thomas didn't like being told he was no fun at all. I'll come with you to the steamworks, and then I'll take Miss Body to the town hall. I'm sure I have plenty of time. So Thomas steamed slowly towards the steamworks, and Charlie followed behind. Thomas chuffed carefully to a junction. Miss Botty smiled sweetly from her passenger car. Charlie pulled alongside. This isn't fun. I'll show you fun. Yippee! <laughs> Thomas couldn't let Charlie be more fun than him. He pumped his pistons, bubbled his boiler, and fizzed his firebox. The race was on. Thomas and Charlie roared and raced. Their funnels were fiery. They were soon red-faced. Alicia Bati could not believe her eyes. My goodness me, this is a surprise. I thought Thomas was steady and slow. What thrills and what fun on the way to my show. The engines were laughing. The race was such fun. You're quick and you're speedy, but I'm number one. With a whoosh and a whoosh, the two engines pulled into the steamworks. Steady, boys. Who is your friend, Thomas? Charlie. He's new. I'm fun. And I'm Alicia Botti. <gasps> Miss Botti, it is an honor to have you visit our steamworks. Kevin. Sorry, boss. And while Charlie was coupled up to Edward's flatbed, Miss Botti sang to the steamworks. <laughs> Then it was time to go. You are fun, Thomas. Let's go to the dairy. Thomas knew he should take Miss Botti straight to the town hall. But he didn't want Charlie to think he wasn't fun. I'm sure I still have time to get Miss Botti to the town hall. So Thomas and Charlie left for the dairy. Soon, the two engines came to a junction. Let's puff down there. We can't. That's a bumpy track. But it'll be fun. Thomas wanted to be fun, so he followed Charlie down the bumpy track. Thomas and Charlie bounced and bumped. Ooh. Alicia Botti oh. juddered and jumped. <laughs> and the couplings jiggered and jiggled looser and looser. At last, Thomas and Charlie pulled up to the dairy. That was fun! <laughs> And this is even more fun. We must go, Miss Body. You mustn't be late for the concert. Bye-bye. If you were a really fun engine, you would race me to Knapford. Thomas knew he was late, but he wanted to be really fun. Just one last race, Charlie. Thomas and Charlie thundered and roared. Thomas thought he had never puffed so fast. I'm first. Let's race again. Then Gordon whooshed past. He was huffing grandly. He was taking Sir Topham Hat to the town hall. Thomas gasped. <gasps> I'm late. I must wish like the wind to the town hall. Thomas pumped his pistons, and he chuffed away quickly in a cloud of steam. I mustn't be late! I mustn't be late! Then there was trouble.
Thomas didn't know that his couplings had unhooked. Thomas raced on to the town hall alone. Thomas steamed to a stop. His cheeks were redder than James's shiny coat. Here I am, sir. Sir Topham Hatt looked hard at Thomas. Here you are, Thomas. But where are Annie and Clarabelle? And where is Miss Potty? Thomas felt terrible. He had been having fun when he should have been really useful. I'm sorry, sir. I've lost them. Sir Topham Hatt boomed. Then you had better go and find them. Thomas puffed to a junction. He had looked for Annie and Clarabelle, but he couldn't find them anywhere. Then Charlie chuffed up. He was on his way to the town hall. Hello, Charlie. I've lost Annie and Clarabelle and Miss Body. The couplings must have come loose on the bumpy track and snapped when we were racing. Don't worry, Thomas. I have a good idea. What's that? We'll have a race. Whoever finds Annie and Clarabelle first is the number one fun engine. Thomas was stern. He didn't think that was a good idea. No, Charlie. This isn't the time for fun. This is the time for being really useful. I have a very important job to do. And Thomas huffed away. Thomas chuffed carefully. He was very worried. Then Thomas heard singing. He smiled from buffer to buffer. That's Miss Body singing. Hooray! <laughs> Thomas found Miss Body by the bridge. He had never heard anything as beautiful as Miss Body singing. Miss Body must go. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. And Miss Body cheerfully waved goodbye as the crowd clapped and cheered. Thomas puffed to the town hall with Annie and Clarabelle. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. At last, Thomas, you've made Miss Botty very late. Not at all, Bertram. Thomas has made me very happy. I've had the ride of my life. So many people to sing to, and such fun. That made Thomas smile, and so did his fun friend Charlie. Steamy Sodor. All the engines on Sodor like to be really useful. They huff and they puff to do their best for Sir Topham Hatt's railway. And sometimes that means doing a job they have never done before. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt had a new job for Thomas. Victor has to go to the transfer yards. He has to see one of the little engines. He will be away all day. You must look after the steamworks, Thomas. Victor will tell you all you need to know. Make sure you listen carefully. Yes, sir. Thomas was excited. The Sodor Steamworks is one of my favorite places on the island. Today, I'm going to be in charge. That's a very important job, Thomas. Good luck. Thank you, Percy. And Thomas puffed proudly away to the Steamworks and his new job. Victor was waiting for Thomas at the Steamworks. Thomas was very excited. His boiler bubbled and his firebox fizzed. Hello, my friend. This is a big day for you. The Steamworks will be very busy. Not too busy for me, Victor. I like being busy. And <laughs> that's good, my friend. Now, when an engine comes in, you have to listen carefully to their problem. If you need help, ask Kevin. That's right, Thomas. When you're in a fix, look no further. Just ask Kevin. It'll save you bother. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Are you listening, Thomas? Yes, Victor. But Thomas was too excited to listen. He wanted to get on with his very important job. Don't worry, Victor. I know just what to do. Hurry, Victor. You'll be late for the little engines. Very well, my friend. Good luck. And Victor steamed away. Thomas was now in charge. Soon, Spencer steamed sulkily into the steamworks. His shiny silver paintwork was scratched and scuffed. Spencer was surprised to see Thomas. Uh, where's Victor? He's away today. I'm in charge. Spencer was worried. Oh my, Spencer. You are in a mess. I'll check you over from wheels to whistle. Put Spencer up on the hoist, please, Kevin. Kevin was worried. 
Are you sure, boss? I mean, Thomas? I don't think Spencer needs to go on the hoist. I mean, he needs a repaint, boss. But Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. He was too excited. He was in charge of the steamworks. Put Spencer up on the hoist, Kevin. Over here, Spencer. <laughs> Please, if you don't mind. Please, <laughs> thank you. So, Spencer huffed huffily to the hoist. Then, Henry chuffed in. Henry wasn't well. He spluttered and stuttered. He wheezed and sneezed. Henry was surprised to see Thomas. What are you doing here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Henry sighed. Then, he wheezed. Then, he sneezed. Footplates and fenders. I know just what's wrong with you, Henry. You have been given the wrong coal. Henry gasped. No, Thomas, it's not my... <laughs> but Thomas wasn't listening. Don't worry, Henry. We'll have you puffing proudly in no time. Kevin, bring over some of Henry's special coal, please. But, but what about Spencer, boss? But Thomas wasn't listening. Quick as you can, Kevin. So Kevin trundled to the coal. Spencer sat sniffly by the hoist. Henry spluttered and stuttered, and Thomas felt pleased and proud. I like being in charge of the steamworks. Then, James steamed snootily in. Straw and twigs blocked his funnel. Why are you here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Bubbling boilers, you are in a mess. What happened to you? I can't puff properly. <laughs> I know just what you need. Kevin! Yes, boss? I mean, Thomas? James needs a new funnel. No, I don't. But Thomas wasn't listening to James. But what about Henry's coal and Spencer on the hoist? Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. Find the spare funnel, please. Kevin was now very confused. To find the funnel, he had to put down Henry's coal. But first, he had to raise Spencer on the hoist. It was all too much for Kevin. Oh, dear, boss. Uh, Thomas. Don't worry, Kevin. I'm in charge. Then there was trouble. Kevin reeled and rolled back towards the hoist. And with a biff and a bash, he hit a big green button. That made Spencer shudder into the air. Trembling tracks, what's happening? Kevin gasped. <gasps> Heaving hooks! Sorry, Spencer. Then Kevin dropped Henry's coal right in front of Henry's nose. Bust my boiler and crashing coals. Kevin rocked and rolled into James. Mind my shiny red paintwork. James was so upset, he blew the biggest puff of steam he had ever blown all over Victor. Victor had just arrived from the transfer yards. Now, he was covered from buffer to buffer in twigs, soot, and straw. Victor's wheels wobbled and his steam stuttered. <gasps> Sizzling Sodor! What has happened to my beautiful steamworks? Thomas looked at Victor, and then at the mess and the muddle. Cinders and ashes! This is all my fault. No, boss. I mean, Thomas. I'm sure it's my fault. I'm sorry, boss. I did try to say, boss. No, Kevin. It's not your fault. I didn't listen to Victor. I didn't listen to you. And I didn't listen to my friends. I was too excited and too silly. I think, my friend, you are right. What will you do now? I'm sorry to all of you. Now I'll listen to you, and I'll make sure you're all fixed properly. So, Victor and Thomas went first to Spencer. I don't need checking from wheels to whistle. I need new paint for my scuffs and scratches. This time, Thomas listened. Don't worry, Spencer. You'll be sparkling silver in no time. That made Spencer very happy. Next, Victor and Thomas talked to Henry. I have my special coal, but there's something wrong with my firebox. It makes me 
<laughs> Wheeze and sneeze. Don't worry, Henry. Your firebox will be cleaned. You won't wheeze and sneeze anymore. And Thomas was right. Pumping pistons. No more wheezes and sneezes. That's much better. Lastly, Victor and Thomas listened to James. I don't need a new funnel. I need my old funnel cleaned and polished. James, you will have the most perfectly polished funnel on Sodor. Oh. James's funnel was shining like the sun. James smiled from fender to footplate. Soon, all the engines were fixed. They were ready to be really useful again. Well done, my friend. Time to go home. Not quite, Victor. It's time to say thank you to Kevin. Anytime, boss. I mean, Thomas. <laughs> and everyone laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs>